Hello everyone, welcome back to GK Code Labs. This is an update to GK Code Labs Big Data end-to-end -end pipeline course. So hope you are following all the sessions being provided as a part of this series. I am also in regular touch with all the people who have subscribed to the course and also being answering to all the queries and issues if you are facing any. So based on this interaction, one of the update that most of you guys are interested in looks to be for AWS. I can understand the concern as AWS has the largest market share in IT infrastructures and there are very high chances of getting interview questions on AWS as well if you are applying for big data jobs these days. In this session we are going to discuss exactly that. We will discuss on how AWS can help in big data projects, few important tools and terminologies in AWS. So follow along and enjoy the session. So let us first discuss what AWS has to provide us in our project as of now whatever end-to-end -end pipeline that we are building, how and where AWS makes importance in that. So as of now what we are doing, we are developing the code using Apache Spark on our local machines. We have all the required tools like Apache Spark, PyCharm installed on our local machines. So I would suggest you first complete all the course that is provided as the content so that you can relate to this session. So this is what we are doing. After developing the code on our local machines, we have set up an external HDP sandbox that is a single node Hadoop cluster which has all the important tools like Hadoop, Spark already installed on that. And this Hadoop sandbox is running on a virtual machine inside our local machine. So I hope you understand this sandbox will just provide us a complete Hadoop and Spark setup so that we don't have to do it manually and all the other important tools like Hive, HBase, everything is installed on this. So this is for our convenience that we have uh, started this HDP sandbox and we were running the code on this. This is what we have done successfully till now. But I'm not sure if you have noticed or not, this virtual machine or sandbox is running on the local machine, the PC or the laptop on which you are executing everything. So in this case, what is happening, no matter you are deploying the code on the cluster, but this cluster is in turn using the resources of your laptop. That is fairly simple to understand because you are not connecting to any external resource. What external resource you are uh, running as a HDP sandbox, that is a virtual machine but running on your local machine itself. So the environment is isolated for sure due to virtualization but that environment also is using the same resources. It is using the uh, hard disk of your laptop it is using the memory, the RAM of your laptop. So I hope you get the limitations of this. Also, as per my interaction, I have seen that few of you do not have the high-end machines. So you guys are still facing the issues in firing up a virtual environment that is running on the HDP sandbox. So this is the infrastructure as of now that we are seeing in GKC Store's project. Now, wouldn't it be better if we can have something like we build the code as it is, as we were doing. Then we deploy and run this code on similar sort of machine that has Hadoop, Spark and all the other tools installed. But sort of what we want is, this should not use the resource on my laptop. This single node should be running somewhere else for which they can either charge you for the compute resources or the memory or the storage or they can provide you some similar kind of plan that you can go through that uh, depending upon your usage, your job runs, uh, your uh, memory usage, you can select some of the plan and this entire computer that we were running as a virtual computer on your machine, this should run somewhere in the cloud. So there are many vendors in the market like Amazon AWS, Amazon, that is Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud Platform also known as GCP. So similarly, there are many vendors that provide these kind of facilities. In this session, we are going to see how this used to work in Amazon Web Services, that is AWS. So hope this is clear to you now that what we are trying to achieve. Now, when it comes to Amazon Web Services, the same scenario as you are seeing on the screen, this is provided by a service from Amazon Web Services that is called as EC2 which stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. So what EC2 does is it provides you a virtual environment that is not running on your machine, but that is running on a cloud 
and that you can consider as another computer which is running somewhere in the cloud and you only have to pay for whatever resources that you are using. Now what EC2 does is, is pro it provides you a computer, a blank one that you are free to use as per your requirement. You can install whatever services you want. This Hadoop and Spark can be easily installed on this. It might be already installed if you are going for uh, a few customized versions of EC2 or you are free to install Hadoop, Spark and whatever you want. Make sure this is not specific to any big data cluster or anything. This is just a machine on which you are free to use whatever operating system as well. You are you want to use Linux, you can use Linux or Windows or whatever operating system uh, you want. And onto that once uh, operating system is installed, then you are free to use any of the tools like Hadoop Spark. If you're in, it's nothing related to big data, then uh, you can go with whatever languages like Python, Java or any web server you want, Apache, any DB you want. MySQL DB or any kind of service you want you want to install it is if you can install it just by connecting through that cloud and then firing up appropriate installation instruction as per that operating system that you have used. Let me tell you one interesting point as well. I hope you have bought this course from uh, our website that is gkcodelabs.com. This is actually running on an Amazon EC2 service. Interesting thing right? So just to give a relevance there is an EC2 instance running under my account. On that, this single node machine, you can ignore Hadoop and Spark. There is uh, a web server running, a storage component is also there on which all the website data is present, a DB is running and all the website content is hosted on an EC2 instance. So that is another computer that I have purchased on which I am maintaining uh, all the website data. So you can understand it's not dedicated for any big data. You can do whatever you want. With, a, with that particular computer. So as a part of your interviews, majorly that you will be asked uh, as a part of infrastructure level in big data, you should be aware of EC2 as well. Okay, that stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. Elastic stands for that this particular infrastructure you are seeing that will con contain some kind of storage, some memory, and that can be controlled dynamically so if you have more requirement like suppose uh, your data storage or your processing is uh, increasing you are seeing so you can directly uh, choose another plan you can pay more and you can increase the memory size or compute capacity the cpus everything you can uh, dynamically uh, change it so that is why this uh, elastic has main importance in ec2 so okay so i hope you got the idea now coming back to our big data project this sounds cool but uh, doesn't actually serves our purpose because we are doing uh, everything in Apache Spark which is a distributed computed platform. So as of now what we are getting is single node machine. No matter that is elastic we can expand the resources but anyways this is a single node. So what if we can get something like this similar kind of setup that we can uh, deploy the code but it should not be a single node machine. The environment should be something like this and uh, coming into some kind of master slave architecture. Okay, So just to leverage our power of Apache Spark that can run on a distributed platform for a huge data. So what if we can have a sort of master node just to manage all the nodes and then multiple similar computers that can work parallelly and provide us all of their power at the same time while processing any particular huge data. So what do we do if we have to achieve something like this in Amazon AWS? So here is when our EMR comes into play. So what EMR has to offer is rather than creating an EC2 instance, you can directly create an EMR cluster that stands for Elastic MapReduce. What it will do, it will spin up as many as nodes you want inside which it will also provide you a plethora of options for selecting the configuration of each and every node. You can select as per you want, as per your uh, data requirement and then just with a few clicks, it will understand all your requirements and will set up entire distributed platform. It will configure all your nodes. It will install Hadoop, Spark, Hive, whatever important components are there for any big data application. It will also build all the security features, all the secure connections between master node, data node, which if you are going to do manually will take days if not weeks. So that is where EMR comes in. Amazon has built up very beautiful service 
and that is very handy and also that can be scaled up or down anytime okay so i hope you get the background of why we are using amazon emr and now if we create a cluster hope you will get the idea that uh, this was something that we were trying to achieve and exactly the same thing we have got so guys hope you got the idea of amazon ec2 and emr where these services hold their place in big data infrastructure further in this session we have built the emr cluster and explained in detail how we can actually interact with this emr cluster deploying the end to end big data pipeline on emr cluster and running the same this update is provided as a part of extended plan of gk code labs premium series of big data end to end pipeline course so if you have already subscribed to it you will get the complete update by today if you are not a subscriber yet please find the course link and the course introduction link in the description below please refer to the same and choose among the various option available in the premium series thank you guys see you later